allow me to set the scene. The year is 2005. It's a cold, rainy day, and you're all wrapped up warm inside with nothing to do. You've ordered a pizza, you've got snacks and your favorite CD playing. You go boot your Windows XP PC and load up that game that everyone won't stop talking about, World of Warcraft. You ponder on if you'd like to join the Mighty Horde or the Brave Alliance. You read through the class descriptions, trying to decide what's the best character for you. You've made your decision. An Orc Warrior. Big. Strong. Fierce. You watch the opening cutscene and begin your first quest. Beating the crap out of these guys! The Orc Peons, the cornerstone of the Horde's might. But what makes them different from the regular Orcs me and you play as? Where do they come from and why are they always working? To answer these questions appropriately, we'll need to go all the way back to 1994 for the release of Warcraft Orcs and Humans. For those of you who may not know, World of Warcraft is a direct descendant from Blizzard's real-time strategy series Warcraft. These games are where the lore of World of Warcraft originated, and it's here where the peon's journey began. See, orcs come from a planet called Draenor. Now they messed that place up pretty good trying to open the Dark Portal. But before all that, they were a tribal and shamanistic race who mostly kept to themselves. Their main goal was, and still is, survival. For the orcs, that didn't always mean hiding away. Survival could mean taking the fight to the enemy's door, standing up to larger threats, or complete takeovers. Because of this way of living, orcs hold strength, valor, and independence as prized traits among their people, going as far as basing their society around them. No, seriously, like their entire society. Referring to the orc history section of the Warcraft 1 manual, our order of ascension is a simple one. Only the strongest survive. All matters of politics or dispute are settled in open debate. Each orc has the right to make heard their arguments, as long as they can back them up with fact or steel. It shows us right off the bat what orcs value most in their people. In a society based around proving your worth, weak and cowardly orcs have no place. This way of life is how they decide who the peons are. I think the Warcraft 2 manual describes best what a peon actually is. The label of peon denotes the lowest station amongst those in the orcish horde. Inferior in all skills of import, these dogs are relegated to menial tasks such as harvesting lumber and mining gold. Downtrodden, the orc peons slave thanklessly to please their overseers. In orc society, the peons are the lowest of the low. Being too weak and too stupid to involve themselves in any displays of strength, be it mind or muscle, they were forced to do the most backbreaking and menial tasks. They were worked so hard that they became physically misshapen often left with a permanent hunch and deformed shoulders from the constant mining and hauling. There were ways for peons to rise through the ranks, however. If you were a particularly hard worker or excelled at a specific task, you could be promoted to the rank of overseer. This would make you the boss of a particular group of peons and allow you to sit back and watch them zug zug. We can see an example of this in WoW, with the NPC Merg Stonecrack, a mining trainer in Ashran. He gives us some of his background. Merg used to be a peon, just like these orcs, but I got to be the best stonecracker out there. Now, they give Merg the name Stonecrack, and lets me boss around these little guys. It's the best job, I tell ya. Overall, the peons were looked down upon as scum. In the orc world, weakness is worse than death, and the orcs made sure to remind the peons of this as often as they could with beatings and berating. That was until the coming of Orc Jesus himself, Thrall. Once Thrall took over as war chief during the Third War, he began campaigning for the fair treatment of peons, seeing them as equals of the Horde for all the hard work they do. He believed the Horde would be nothing without the constant labour of the peons and urged his fellow Orcs to stop beating and harassing them. Even though there were some Orcs that didn't agree, the overall treatment of peons vastly improved under Thrall's leadership. Because of this, they now felt an overwhelming need to please their overseers, pushing to get more results and shockingly found themselves being brave for the sake of their war chief. Ukor here is a great example of this. In his quest, A Peon's Burden, 
he tells you of his great journey from Razor Hill to the Valley of Trials to deliver a bundle of food. However, when he arrived, he found that the valley didn't actually need any food, so he asks you to take the unused food back to Razor Hill for him. While a pretty mundane quest for you and me, it would have been unheard of for a peon to put themselves in any kind of danger during the First War. It's a sign of major growth and shows that Thrall may have been right. By the end of the Third War, the perception of the peon began to change for the better among the Horde. So much so that every year on September 30th, they celebrate Peon Day. Peon Day is a national holiday in Azeroth celebrating the legend of a peon who saved the world. Legend has it that long ago, the leaders of the two races, Orc and Human, each called upon a lowly worker and assigned him a great task. This task had to be finished by the end of the day, lest the world suffer grave consequences. Working diligently, both completed their task four minutes before the day ended. Thus, on the anniversary of that day, we celebrate in honour of all the peons and peasants everywhere. The funny thing is, this is actually referencing a real-life event. It turns out, Blizzard promised that the first ever closed beta test for the World of Warcraft European servers would be delivered before the end of September. As the month of September went by, there was no beta to be found. By the 30th, players gave up all hope as the final hour approached. It seemed as if Blizzard would fail to deliver their promise. Until... At 11.56pm, four minutes before the end of September, Blizzard managed to push out the closed beta for Europe thanks to the tireless work of their own real-life peons. To commemorate this victory, Peon Day was created and celebrated only on European servers every year on September 30th. At least it was until 2007 when it would be replaced by the Harvest Festival. There wasn't really much to the celebration, but it was definitely a neat little in-game holiday commemorating such a mundane event. It was really just goblin vendors that sold fireworks at discount prices appearing for the day in Stormwind and Orgrimmar. It's said that you can still find these vendors in major cities on the day, but ultimately the holiday isn't celebrated or mentioned by characters in game anymore. Yeah, so it turns out these unassuming slackers had quite the story behind them. Next time you roll an orc, maybe take a moment to appreciate their history. Then bash their skulls in. Thanks very much for watching. Grateful if you could interact with the video if you enjoyed it. Do you have any memories of dumb stuff that made you smile and wow? If so, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. I had a ton of fun reading your responses from my GM video. See you soon.